Welcome to Atlanta Live. I am Pastor David Smith, my wife Kim. Great program tonight, great guest. We interviewed uh, an author in the first segment. We have another author, a uh, wonderful lady that loves the Lord that has written uh, several great books, a cut, written a couple of books and co-written some others. And we want to introduce you tonight to Elizabeth Noyce. God bless Hi. you. Welcome, Elizabeth. Thank Hi. you for being here. It's, uh, it's an honor to have you with us tonight, and thank you for coming on the program. Thank you very much. It's a pleasure being here. You have written a couple of books, and we're going to talk about those tonight. One of them, uh, they're novels. We're, we're, yes. we're, uh, we are talking to writers of novels. It's, it's one thing to write a book. It's another thing to write a novel. Uh, an autobiography is kind of easy because I just have to tell my story, <laughs> but you've got to make up a story. And, and you're imagined. I, I, I love... Uh, as we were interviewing Joan earlier, I was thinking about what it must take to write a novel to process the story and your your imagination. What's that like? Wow, it's like having a whole cast of characters living in your head 24-7, yeah. <laughs> all clamoring for their story to be told. Yeah, that's great. That's great. Tell me, tell me a little bit about your history. I was noticing uh, I got that our previous guest was from Alabama, from Prattville. She lives yeah. in Prattville, but I, somehow I overlooked that you're from Mobile, Alabama, because I'm an Alabama boy too. Yes. Football season starts this week, and if you're from Alabama, you know that's a big deal. That is a big deal. And uh, so I am just very blessed to have two Alabama girls on the, <laughs> three of them, as a matter of fact, on the program tonight. You're from Mobile originally. Yes, I grew up in Mobile. And uh, met your husband? I did. I met my husband over the telephone. A wrong number, believe it or wow. not. Wow. Really? No, that's a novel. But we got married and we left for Germany for three years. He was in the service. Wow. So this little girl who had never been out of the state of Alabama is now a world traveler. I, yeah, I wanted to touch on that. We're going to get to the book, but yeah. I, th that is quite an accomplishment. I read where you have been, and it may have updated since the biography, but 50 countries? Yes. On how many continents? Five? Four continents. Four continents. Mm -hmm. Wow. I, I interviewed someone last night on another program that was talking about they'd been to every continent but Antarctica. They were a missionary, and they said, I've just determined that the penguins <laughs> may not need the gospel as much as the rest of the world. Let's talk about the books. You, okay. You've written two. Uh, the first one, Imperfect. Perfect Wings. Tell us a little bit about that. Let's, well, let's mention both of them. You've got two books, Imperfect Wings and Imperfect Trust. So I'm assuming this is a series. This is a series. It's a five book series called the Imperfect Series, obviously. Mm -hmm. They each individually are following a family of horse ranchers who live in rural Idaho. And the story evolves through each book targeting the Christian family and their impact upon the people around them. The first book, Imperfect Wings, is about one of the sons who has uh, encountered a problem on a mission in Honduras. Mm. And a young lady drops into the middle of his mission and bungles it. However, she comes away with the evidence that he and his team were seeking. What transpires after that is she becomes the target of a crazed drug lord and the next two years are spent trying to protect her from him until the case can come to trial. So they wind up back in Idaho in the middle of her family who closes ranks around her to protect her during this time. It's a journey of betrayal. It's a journey of learning to trust again. It's a journey of forgiveness and letting go of the past. And to learn to fly again despite your broken wings. Everybody has imperfect wings. I, I can tell in our conversation, I want to return to the book, let's talk about the author for just a moment. <laughs> because I can tell in our conversation and just by your demeanor, your, your personality that and I read your bio as well, and you shared that that uh, people are drawn to you for your wisdom. You, you've written great books, but I can tell you are a, you process. I've even watched in our conversation as, as you're a listener. Uh, yes. Kim is a lot like that, that you, you write, but you may not speak as much as you listen. Is, are your novels, um, is that 
a foundation maybe of, of where your stories come from. It's trying to share, even sharing the gospel through these stories. Is that part of it? Yes. I think you'll find talking to most authors that they invest a great deal of themselves in their mm -hmm. stories, in their characters, in their situations. So yes, there are people that I draw on from around me that find their way into these books. Mm -hmm. So we always say, be careful, don't, don't make me <laughs> mad or I may kill you off. Oh, oh man. But, but no, uh, I, I put a lot of myself into these characters. Yeah. I invest in my characters. That's, that's wonderful. Tell me how you came to Christ. How did you come to know the Lord? I grew up in a Christian family. I had a very strong Christian father who believed devoutly in the Lord. His pastime was sitting in his recliner with his pipe and reading the Bible. Mm. I learned a lot of different scriptures at his knee and it, w it was expected that this is what would happen. And lo and behold, it happened. I came to know Christ at the age of 11 and I remember going to my father and telling him, I want to go forward. I want to give my heart to Christ. And I remember him saying, I don't know if you're old enough to understand what you're doing, but who am I to stand in your way? Sure. Who am I to stand in God's way? And he walked with me down the aisle. Yeah, wow. that's so good. And you know, the amazing thing about that, I, I tell folks all the time at our church, we're redoing our ministry to children, our entire building. and leadership, all that kind of stuff. And there is no junior Holy Spirit or junior gospel. It's the yeah. same Jesus that died for them. Yes. And what a powerful testimony that, that now you're able to invest in other people's lives. And what prompted you to begin writing? You've written these two books, you've co-written another series. Um, but what, what really prompted you to say, you know what, I'm gonna write a book. And to write a, cause this is a, a 400 page book. Yes, it is. So. How did that happen? Well, I will tell you honestly, I read voraciously. I'm mm. an avid reader and I have a f several favorite authors, but I read a favorite author this one time and was so disappointed with the ending of the book. It was like he had reached a deadline and had to finish it. <laughs> yeah. and, and it did not close all of the loopholes. Mm, I've read that and book, my probably. statement at that time was, I can do as well as this. I yeah. can do better. Yeah. So I tried. It took me many years <laughs> to get to a point where I could actually submit it to someone for consideration. But yeah, I can do this. Do you think it's easier to write um, series books or just a standalone book or do you find it? Do you know, I'm glad you asked that question. I like series books to read. I like them because you, again, I, to use that word, invest in a character. You get to know a character. When you write a series, you've created a lot of yourself in these characters. So my thought was, why throw them away after one book? Why not leverage them? But the more you put them into unique, different situations, the more depth they have to their character and the more involved people become with them and then you're able to show the different frailties of the human nature and show how people can overcome them sure yeah I know when I read I, I love series because you just can't wait till that next book comes out and you're just you know anticipating I, I that have next to tell book. you my daughter made a comment and it was so wonderful she after a series that she had read totally invested in that series and she got to the very end and she said I feel like I've been unadopted <laughs> <laughs> that's so good our, our time it goes by so quick yes it does and it has gone by yes but our time together but I want to tell people how they can learn more about the book okay. you have a website or a way that I have a to. website it's www.elizabethnoycewrites.com that's on the screen right now it also has your Facebook all you do is facebook.com and then forward slash the information that's on the screen right now that, that can connect correct. with you. And I encourage everyone to get the book. I'm looking forward to reading it. I need a new book to read, so uh, I'm gonna 
get in, and I'll be waiting on the next book because I'll have these two read. Thank you so much. And we'll we'll move on. But it's so good to meet you. Thank, Thank you, you for coming tonight and I sharing. Appreciate it. Thank you. Appreciate Kim. the the. I appreciate the, just the joy of the Lord that illuminates out of you. That's obvious. And thank you for being a light in darkness and for invading uh, the territory of, of novels and book writing and, and sharing the gospel in good, clean novels. Thank you. We didn't address that, but that was one of the things you said, to write a book that's clean yes. and, and able to... Uh, that anyone can read. Yes. Amen. So it's such a joy to meet you. Thank you for being on the program. Thank you for watching.